Indeed, indeed. Uncle Dab on the beat. Uncle Dab on the beat. Bassy, bassy, the bassy C. Yeah, this is Boss Talk. Boss Talk. Rockin' state to state, yeah, that's Boss Talk. Don't your niggas be great, that's Boss Talk. When you made a way, that's Boss Talk. Yeah, that's Boss Talk. Rockin' state to state, yeah, that's Boss Talk. Don't your niggas be great, that's Boss Talk. When you made a way, that's Boss Talk. Yeah, I put my bricks in it. Yeah, squirt go hard, I put a dick in it. I'm a king, I'm a lord. I spent thousands to go on tour. Nah, wait, it's more. Yeah, my nigga, yeah, it's more. Puff is a owner, Hope is a owner, Nip was a owner, Scorp is a owner. I went from being a dancer to throwing events. Now I own companies, my nigga, I'm the shit. And I ain't gon' stop till my whole team's legit. It's more levels to climb, it's more money to get. I'm mad focused, nigga, I can't quit. Never that, my torch is always lit. Yeah, this is boss talk. Rockin' state to state, yeah, that's boss talk. Boss talk. Yeah, your niggas be great, that's boss talk. When you made a way, that's boss talk. Boss talk. Yeah. yeah, that's boss talk. Rockin' state to state, yeah, that's boss talk. Hopin' your niggas be great, that's boss talk. When you made a way, that's boss talk. Big talk, big boss, nigga, big moves. I'm a big dog, nigga, I'm a pit bull. Nasty, this is big draw. Yeah, nasty. This is big draw. Nah, I didn't wait for no help. I put up my own money and I signed myself. Pay a high so I can never get shelf. I'm locked in just like a seatbelt. South Dakota, Seattle, yeah, I've been there. Nebraska, Wyoming, yeah, I've been there. Utah and Arizona, I've been there. Colorado, Texas, yeah, I've been there. I got straight to it, never been scared. I'm on the grind. I this is boss talk. Rock it state to state, yeah, that's boss talk. Helping your niggas be great, that's boss talk. Huh? When you made a What's up with you, man? What's going on with you, bro? Yeah, man, not much. Hey, uh hold on real quick. Where the fuck is this shit at? I'm trying to do the live from both from both my Instagrams. I'm about to send you another request from my other phone. Okay, for sure. Tree Swazi, what's going on, little bro? Oh, okay. you get the Yep, I got it right here. What you got going on though, man? Nothing much, man. I but appreciate you for coming on, man. Coming on, man. It's all good, man. Why is it picking up the sound like that, brother? That ain't it. Hold on, let me, hold on, let me see if I can mute this shit or something. I think it's because the phone is too close. Yeah, if you, if, yeah, you got a mute one. I gotta cover this motherfucking mic or shit that is picking it up hella good. Fucking up the shit. That's just, that's just the echo. Hell yeah. It's like we in the studio, nigga. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta put something over this mother. This ain't him. Give me, give me a second. Keep getting together. We got time. We got time. We got time. We got time. Yeah. Don't know if it's Friday, though, man. Man, nothing much, man. Nothing much. Just, uh, just chilling out, man. How things been going? How things been going? Oh, oh, living fair. Feel no more. I stay in Davis. Oh, you out that way? Yeah, I stay in Davis. Hell yeah! 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 Hell ye
Go get that damn baby out of my fucking face. What's up? Move. Hold on real quick. Hold on real quick, bro. You good. You're broke two minutes, man. Oh, shit. Hey, can you still hear me on this motherfucker? Yeah, yeah. It ain't echoing, huh? Nah. It it Nah, I don't hear no uh, echo. Because I, uh, I, I, uh, I, I, I covered up the mic on the microphone. I covered up the mic on the microphone. That's weird. That's weird as fuck. Nigga, it's got like a fucking delay to the video. You probably got to put the phone on the... Yeah, it's like put it away from the other phone or something. I, 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 so it won't echo. It won't echo. Man, it's good. Man, it's good. Fuck you. I'm going to just do it from this one, bro. You go, this one? All right, now. <laughs> just do it from this one. Because it's on my iPhone anyways. This other phone, it's, some, it's just my old-ass Android phone from, like, hella long ago. Somebody said, bro, you got a twin? <laughs> yeah. Man, Android quality look. Ass, boy. What's good, though, man? Shit, let's, let's get to it. What's up with you, though? Not much, man. I appreciate you for coming on, bro. Taking a few minutes with your boy, man. Oh, good, um, man. Yeah, man, I, I wanted to get you on. I was trying to get you on for a minute. That's why I reached out the first time, you know, uh, originally, you know, to get you up on here uh, to build. Um, you know, so I want to build on musically, a per you know, like your, your ongoing life, your journey, your journey as an artist. I just want to start from the beginning, man, on like, you know, how did you even get into music? Like, where did it start for music for you? Shit, when it come to like rapping and shit, bro. Like honestly, I was raised, I was, I was raised on, I was raised on music, bro. Keep it real with you, like nigga. Like just being around my dad as a young nigga, like you feel me. Like I was really raised on like just listening to mad oldies. You feel me? Mm. Like all the old school hits. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that real shit, that real type of music that ain't never gonna come back. The shit that could never be duplicated. That type of shit. You dig know what I'm saying? Like. And then, like, getting introduced to, like, rap, you feel me? Like, all of this shit falls in line. All of it falls in line, you know, like, um, me me becoming an artist later on down the road. You feel what I'm saying? Like, my dad, my dad had, like, nigga, the first rapper I ever listened to real shit was Mac Dre. Nigga, that cassette tape, that cassette tape, nigga, with Too Hard for the Radio on that motherfucker. Too Hard. Feel me? My dad had that shit on cassette. Oh, like, listening, listening to that and, like, like, like after that came like Tupac. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. Like that. Yeah, that's crazy. That like too strong was out the rip. You get Mac Dre and Tupac, and that's like yo. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's, that's the, two that's different you. uh uh energies and personalities and shit introduced to. So that's dope. That's a dope yeah. balance, actually. I know. I think you're the first person that told me that. Like first two people was like Dre, and and then and then Pac. That's dope. Yeah, for sure. Them niggas both, them niggas both definitely have a very different story to tell. You dig what I'm saying when it comes to, you know, putting a putting a life in the lyrics. You dig what I'm saying? One hundred percent, one hundred percent, man. So you know, I wanted to ask you. You know, you know, we met, you know, at the Fair Fair I Love You store in the Cipher, and so that's like our first like introduction. Um, I wanted to get your perspective of like, well, perspective from two different things. So the first perspective is. How do you feel about the climbing in Fairfield in, in our city? Like, do you feel um, musically we taking an incline, or do you feel like, um, like, what do you feel like? Do we we missing something, or are we taking an incline? Do you think that artists need to work more with each other, or are you liking where it's at right now? How do you feel about where the city is at right now in the current time? I ain't finna sugarcoat a motherfucking. Be on boss talk. That's why I had to come get you up on here. You hear me? I'm not finna sugarcoat nothing. Period, my nigga. But watch, watch out, baby. When it comes to when it comes to Fairfield rap, my nigga, to be straightforward, to be blunt, like real talk. I mean, some niggas, some niggas got their wave going for them, and that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, congratulations to y'all niggas for you know pushing forward for the shit that y'all believe in, and you know your success and whatnot. But I'm gonna be real with you, bro. Our city. Got a bunch of hating ass niggas, bro. Don't nobody want to work together. 
niggas be involved in politics and too much shit when it's just rap don't got nothing to do with politics. Niggas be forcing that shit, bro. Like, niggas be doing so much weird shit. And I'm not necessarily saying that niggas in our city are weird. You feel me? Like, that's not what I'm saying at all. But it's like, niggas involve so much different shit in the music that don't belong there. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and it's crazy because it's like, you can't even keep it player. You dig what I'm saying? Like, you can't go and work with the next nigga and expect everything to be cool on some fly player shit. Like, you know, we networking, we're artists. You can't do that because you go fuck with one nigga, right? For example, let's just go, let, let's just say you, you go, you, you, you go fuck with Day Day from Grande Circle. I'm just making up a name. You feel me? You go fuck with Day Day from Grande. And then you got some niggas from another side of, you know what I'm saying, another side of town from Fairfield. You feel me? They don't fuck with this nigga. But mind you, you a player though. You're not thinking of it like, like, oh, now I got to worry about who this nigga fuck. You, you just, you doing your thing. You're trying to expand. You're trying to show love. You know what right. I'm talking about? Great game with niggas and all that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to try to keep unity in the city. You know what I'm saying? And like help niggas help each other. That's the way you thinking. But the way these other niggas be thinking like, oh, we don't fuck with this nigga. You know, it's been bloodshed with this nigga. Fuck this nigga. Oh, you fucking with him? Okay. We are going to mix you in with these niggas now. We gonna mix you in with these niggas now. Now you a sucker. You a bitch ass nigga for fucking with this bitch ass nigga. I don't fuck with. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's it's weird like that, but that's really how it be for real. It's not even just our city, bro. It's just the Bay Area, but. And that was the thing. That was the second part of the question I was gonna ask you. I was gonna get into the Bay thing next. I want to stay on our city real quick. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I agree with you on a lot of that. Like I had Ice Me's up here like like a month ago, and we was talking about that too. Like. I yeah. was telling them, like, yo, when we was coming up, because I'm 30, so I'm like, in my era, when, when we was coming up, yeah, I'm 30. it was really... Not, bro, not it was, 32, but I'm, I'm 30 as well, yeah. Yeah, so we we was... It was really active. The pilot, it, Like, it wasn't, no... If you from Middle Art, you from Grande, you from Pintel, you from... Like, motherfuckers wasn't really... Like, if it was... Uh, I, so I feel you. I remember the era when things were good in Fairfield. Yeah, where it was cool, but then it was still, it was still a lot of it was it was like what you were saying, it, like that's so true. Like, yo, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really rocking with this person because I got issues with this person and this person got. So I don't want you to fuck with this person. So if you loyal to, if your partner's from Grande and this nigga from Metal Lark and your partner from Metal Lark is beefing with somebody from Grande and. He's an artist, and all right, cool. I'm loyal to my, so I, I'm not finna, even though you a fan of bro, you want to work with, you not going to do that out of your loyalty because you didn't want to look like you was all that bullshit. So I'm like, years going by, now it should, because I agree, but it should, it shouldn't be like that. It should be like, like, come on, bro, like, like, it's 2021, you know what I'm saying? Like. A lot of shit then got gentrified. Shit ain't even the same, no. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not like. So I do not want any nigga listening to this shit to get it twisted. You know, it's different. If you hold loyalties to niggas, you know what I'm saying? Like if if you got a if you got a bond and you've been growing up with niggas, you've been fucking with niggas, you hustle with them, and those are your folks for real, and you hold loyalty to certain niggas, and then you go and fuck with some niggas that they don't fuck with. Then that's a whole different situation. But if you just a neutral nigga that ain't, you know what I mean? Like, let's just say, from like me, for example, I don't got problems with nobody. I'm not in nobody's politics. You know what I'm saying? I do my own thing. I've always been in my own lane. Can't no nigga, can't no nigga put me in nobody's shit. I always, you know what I'm saying? Every time I see, every time I see anybody, man, it's always a peace sign in his love with me, nigga. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't never stepped on a nigga toes. I ain't never did no backdoor hoe shit. I ain't never, did, I ain't never did nothing. I ain't never told on a nigga, no nothing. So a nigga can't put me in the next nigga shit. But it's different if you fuck with a certain group and, and you hold loyalty to those men and then you go and fuck with niggas that they don't fuck with. Now, I can understand where that makes sense. But, you know, like, niggas like me and you, you know what I'm saying? We don't got issues with nobody. And then niggas try to mix you into something. That's what makes this music shit weird. Facts. That's, that's just one of the things. One of, one of the things. What do you think, bro? Like, what do you think? can be some some ways you think you know we could 
bring some more unity to the city. Like, even just like what we're doing right now, like, this is part of the reason why I wanted to get more Fairfield people up here, like, because I'm really, I'm personally really tired of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's too much, we got too much talent on so many tiers of levels, from the youngest all the way up to the, to the, to the, el you know, to the older cats. It's so much music just in the city. Like, every, it shouldn't be no problem with, it should be more features and networking and collaborations amongst each other. Like, what do you think we can do to to help, you know, start pushing that that agenda more of like, yo, like, leave all that other bullshit. That's that's just make dope music. It's about the city as a whole. Fuck your little bullshit. It's about the city as a whole. You know, what I'm, you get what I'm saying? And how we can look as a city. What do you think is some ways or some things we can do, bro? Man, I mean, there's a gang of things that niggas could do, but. I mean, honestly, bro, like it's it's a it's a group effort for shit to change. To be honest, like one nigga can't change everything, but uh, I would say this: we need we need a real platform. For one, we need a real platform to fuck with. You know what I'm saying? Like all like nowadays, everything's ran by clout. If you don't got clout, niggas ain't fucking with you. Like for example, like Thizzler, you ain't getting on Thizzler unless you paying. Or you got mad clout to where it benefits them. So it's like, shit. Niggas, niggas to come together, bro. It's, it's going to take a lot, bro. Like, it's going to take a lot. Like, ain't, it definitely wouldn't come overnight. And, 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 and believe me when I say this, niggas have been talking about this shit for years when it comes to rappers. Rappers coming together. You feel yeah. me? And niggas... You know, trying to trying to put some shit together, bro. Like it's 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 been in it's been in a rotation of a conversation between so many different niggas' mouths in Fairfield. But this is the thing: is like so many niggas got these egos, bro. Like, and I know, no, I know, I know. Niggas want you to chase them or feel like you you know, like they want you to kiss their ass. We ain't even going. A lot of motherfuckers want you to kiss their ass. Ain't nobody doing no ass kissing. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like oh you supposed to like nah like we we ain't doing that um so I, and which is which is weird because it's like motherfuckers be thinking they bigger than what they is it's like <laughs> it's just, like nigga you, you nigga you not Kanye West nigga so like, niggas, niggas, <laughs> I be in over their head with this music because you got posted on a couple of local sites nigga you you um you gonna charge this. Nigga, you ain't did nothing yet. Right. You ain't even left the city. Hey, you know what else is funny too? Even though it's kind of off subject, a lot of a, a lot of niggas, not even just in our city, in our city and all around the Bay Area. You know how many niggas act like just because they got this certain street reputation that they feel as if they deserve a top spot, like like they or that nigga, like they start rapping. You feel me? And then they feel like, oh, nigga, I'm the nigga. Um, like, <laughs> bro, like, nobody gives a fuck how many niggas you shot. Nobody gives a fuck how much dope you sold, how much time you did in prison, any of that shit. Because if that's the case, nigga, there would be, there would be millions. Like, like, come on, bro, we will all be on off rap then. Because there's a lot of niggas that good that got good street reputation. You know, there's even, but let's not even say that. Let me hold back on saying that because there's a lot of crash dummy ass niggas that got street reputation too. The fact. Straight crash dummy ass torpedo ass niggas. He caught them torpedo. That's <laughs> a new one on the show. <laughs> they call them torpedoes, but a nigga that just that's the nigga that's ready to go at any time. He don't care about how much time he get. He just a crash dummy. Yeah. So on a flip note, on a on a on a flip note, you know, this been a conversation as well of like, um, you know, uh Fairfield don't don't never get the look right, or people think that Fairfield uh, is like a rich suburban area, like Calabasas or something. They think they they drive out here and they think that this shit is Calabasas or Hollywood. Um, what's your experience like when you was coming up as a as a young boy coming up, you know, coming up in the city and shit? Cause I, I I'm tired of that picture. So like I I always try to tell people like, oh that shit is a myth. Like what y'all hear or think like this shit is like Calabat. It's nothing like that. We go through the same shit you niggas is going through. Politics, the bullshit, the justification, the homelessness, the killing, drugs, whatever you want to say. So like, well, what was your experience like coming up as a young guy, man? 
I mean, not 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 that it not that it is. You know, I don't I don't look at street shit to be praised. I don't look at gangster shit to be praised. Nah, get that type of shit. Because at the end of the day, nigga, it's all about you know how God gonna look at you when it comes to it. So fuck all the other shit. But since you're asking, like, list like. Fairfield is not what a lot of these niggas think it is. Like, I'm going to be real with you. Like, before I get to my upbringing, like, when I was in the pen, bro, when I first went to the pen back in 2011, bro, you know, like, it's 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 weird to me, too, because, like, these Richmond niggas, these Oakland niggas, these San Francisco niggas, you know, the cities with the, with the higher crime rates, they feel like they're superior because their cities have higher crime rates. They feel like, oh, uh, you, you know how many Oakland niggas I heard say, oh, nigga, I'm not from the Bay, I'm from the town. How many Richmond niggas say that? They be like, oh, Fairfield ain't the Bay, Fairfield ain't this, Fairfield ain't that. It's like, bro, nigga, just because our city ain't as dirty as yours don't mean that we don't got projects. It don't mean that we don't got public housing. It don't mean that niggas ain't struggling and there's homeless people all over our city. Our city is just like yours in a way. You know, it's just smaller. You feel what I'm saying? Like, 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 for example, Oakland, Oakland's got surrounding areas that got suburbs, nigga. Piedmont, the Oakland Hills, motherfucking Alameda, nigga. Other places, bro. Like everybody knows that. Like, nigga, every ghetto ass city has a surrounding area where it's got suburbs. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, but yeah, man. You know, but but fuck that. Let's let, let's let's get to the the answer to the question. About like how was my upbringing and all that shit. So, yeah, bro. Like I, I grew up in the West. You feel me? I'm from the West. I, I, I grew up on Crowley Lane. You feel what I'm saying? Back when Crowley Lane was like a real like crack spot. You feel what I'm saying? Like back, like Fairfield was much more wider than it is today. Like, like Fact. yeah, niggas is dying and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like the city wild. You know people wilding out and you know politics and all that wild shit. But back. Back when I was a kid, nigga, Fairfield was wild, bro. I'm talking about, like, nigga, helicopters out every other day, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Like, nigga, there was hella shit going on. Like, like real, like, real, real crackheads, like, for real. Like, now you got other niggas on different types of drugs. But back then, like, that, like, nigga, it was wild back then, bro. Like, I grew up, I grew up in the West. That's my main, that's my main area where I'm from. That's where I'm from, nigga. That's where, you know what I'm saying? That's my, that's my stomping grounds. But I also lived, I also lived on Bristol, Nigga, before they, like, like right there on Travis and uh in Pennsylvania. Yeah. That apartment complex was never there. That's a that's a whole, that's a whole new building, bro. Like they built that what like probably like eight eight years ago or some About shit. Seven eight years ago. Something yeah. like that, right? But that apartment complex was never there, bro. I used to live on Bristol for like probably like two, two or three years back when I was a little kid, bro. You feel what I'm saying? But my grandma, my grandma lived in the West, so, like, like, even though I lived over there, you know what I'm saying? Like, my mom be at work and my dad was out doing his thing and shit. Like, nigga, I would always be in the West. Like, I was basically only there, you feel me, like, to sleep. <laughs> <You feel me? laughs> he said to sleep, but you was out, but you, you was around outside. You was around the West. You was moving around uh, the West. But the, you know what I'm saying? It was because my, my, my dad was doing his thing and my mom was working. You feel me? So I couldn't be at the house alone because we was little niggas. You feel me? So I was always at my grandma's house. Like that's that's why I was raised there, bro. I, I'm from the West, you feel me? But I did live over there. Like I remember Bristol was the same, nigga. Bristol was a straight crack spot, bro. Like real talk. Like, bro, like Yeah, Bristol was wild, man, nigga. That's back when uh nigga, I'm talking about back in like, you know what I mean? Like we 30, like, you know what I mean? We still kind of young. But nigga, that's back when uh Phoenix was going crazy too. Oh yeah, on Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, Phoenix, yeah. Yeah, dead bodies they found in in that pond before they remodeled the park, nigga. Yeah, nigga, they said they found like four or five dead bodies in that motherfucker, bro. Like all types of shit, hella, hella, thrown, hella thrown away guns in that motherfucker and everything. That's crazy. Yeah, back then. That's wild, bro. Yeah, that was that was my upbringing, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, there's a lot more I can say, but you know, like, shit was wild though. You know what I mean? Like. Just like any other city, bro. You feel me? Just a different well, nation. Nah, one hundred percent. So for the Bay now, so we, you know, you answered it for Fairfield. So now, like for the Bay Area as, as a whole, like the music scene as a whole right now, are you uh, how do you feel about the music scene? Do you think the music scene in the Bay Area is taking an incline 
at any, or do you still feel like we in the same place that we was five, five to ten years ago? Nothing's changed. I think the Bay Area to stand still, and the reason why I say that is because, and like this is just reality for me and, and how I look at it. See, because the Bay Area has always had popping artists, right? But it's only that certain amount of popping artists, and it's been like that forever to me. Like, it's always been that little bit of popping artists. Like, when you think of L.A., like, nigga, like, bro, if, like, if you were to ask me, think of L.A., how many artists, bro, there's so many popping artists in L.A. area. You think of Atlanta. Nigga, there's so many popping artists in Atlanta. New York, Detroit, they have a very large amount of popping-ass artists. When you think of the Bay Area, Northern California, yeah. nah, it's not, bro, like, like, bro, like, it's, it's, it's weird, bro. Like, so many niggas, like, everybody want to ball on each other out here. Everybody want to stunt on each other out here. Everybody want to be the big dog out here. Everybody want to be the biggest of the biggest of something out here. Everybody want to be the king, not realizing that there could be multiple kings at once. Like, I feel like that's why the Bay Area is at a standstill, because niggas all want to ball on each other. Everybody wants to be the top fucking dog, not realizing that, you know, like, if niggas would stop trying to bring politics into shit and try to involve other shit into the music and all of that, like, bro, we could all ball, we could all eat, we could all become successful, bro, and help each other win. You feel me? Like, in and the outside of the hustle, you feel me? With the music industry, everything, bro. Like, the Bay Area, like, bro, I ain't gonna lie, like, niggas copy our style. Niggas copy from Mac Dre. Niggas copy from Too Short, E-40. Nigga, nigga, like, all the big names that came out of here, bro. Like, niggas be copying our style. Like, like, bro, hella L.A. niggas. They be copying our style. Like, they influence. Like, nigga, that nigga Slim 400 got Mac Dre tattooed on him. You feel what I'm saying? Them Shoreline Mafia niggas said that shit in their interviews multiple times that they influenced by Mac Dre and the movement that he had going on. You feel what I'm saying? Like, hella different niggas, though. It's not even just Southern California niggas. Like, hella different cats from the East Coast, Midwest, you know what I'm saying? Like, they fuck with our shit. They fuck with our shit, but nigga, Bay Area, bro, like, there ain't, there ain't really no unity. There ain't really no unity like that. Like, Desler posted some shit like that the other day, about like a week ago, and niggas was, everybody was saying the same thing. Anybody with an open eye to this shit, everybody was saying the same thing, bro. Like, Bay Area niggas, bro, Bay Area niggas do not unite when it comes to this music shit at all. It's every nigga, it's, 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 it's crabs in a bucket, man. The same shit you been hearing niggas say. Crabs in the bucket, man. Yeah, we've been hearing that for the longest. And it's crazy because it's like, it's so much talent. Now, what I will say is I, I think it is taking like a little incline far as like the looks all at once. Like seeing, you know, Simba doing his thing, uh, Russell doing his thing. Stunnamental 2 or Grand National, The Collective. Like, I'm starting to kind of see, like, people kind of starting to get some looks all at, at one time. So I was like, okay, that's that's kind of dope. Like, it's like like a little something that's spinning off in the pot. Like, something is starting to, to, to build up. Because I think people are tired of it, too. Like, up-and-coming artists and stuff, I think niggas is tired of that shit. So they just like, we gonna, you know, we finna change that. We gonna start doing what we gotta do. No matter if you get a cosign or or you know the or the, or the support or not, but as a whole, yeah, it's 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 tough. Like even the producers, like we don't even be knowing who the producers are. Like we don't the producers, we don't have no songwriting camps. Where where the studios, all the artists go to, like in Atlanta, it's it's specific studios they have where you know, like oh yeah, everybody at that studio or at least two studios or all right. the songwriting camps is at. Ooh, like, we don't got none of that shit, so. A lot of niggas don't share game. That's why you don't even know who the producers are, bro. Like, you don't know who the producers are. Like, niggas don't be giving niggas their credit and shit. You feel me? Because, like, everybody, like, bro, like, I'm going to keep it real. Like, how many times you've seen a nigga post a song? And how many times do you see these niggas put beat by and tag them? You never see that shit. But another thing, another thing that I forgot to say, too, about Bay Area a lot of these niggas that are considered OGs and big dogs of this rap music, this rap shit, like, let's just say Too Short and E-40. 
let's just say those two niggas, right? And uh, shit, we could even say Filthy Rich too, because that nigga, that nigga, you feel me? Like that nigga really on. Um, he's on a that nigga's on a large. You feel me? He's on a large. I, I respect. I got a lot of respect for Filthy Rich. A lot of these niggas, like I'm not, I'm not saying that they haters or they, you know, like. You know, like they they don't want to see other niggas shine, but the way I look at this shit is that see, I have a player mentality at all times. You know what I'm saying? So the way I think of things when I think about like like I'm not worried about getting a deal or nothing like that, bro. Like you feel me? Like I'm not worried about no deal. Like I'm getting money. You feel me? Like I ain't rich, but I'm getting money. I ain't worried about no fucking deal trying to strike rich off a deal, even though that would be cool, you know. But when I look at things, bro, I look at it like. What Mac Dre did. You know what Mac Dre did? Mac Dre did the cut though committee. Right? He put his main man's on. What he did next, he did Thiz Nation. Thiz Nation was all street niggas from each city in the Bay Area. What did he do next? He did Thiz Latin. That nigga he, he basically put on everybody in the Bay Area. He put on everybody all up and down Northern California. He was fucking with Sack too. He was fucking with Sack. He was fucking with he was fucking with everybody. He fucked with everybody. Nigga, them niggas, uh, Salcino, motherfucking stupid swoop, and all them Sack niggas. He was fucking with them, and he was fucking with all the Sack. Yeah. Come on, bro. But but what I'm saying is like when I look at things, I look at how Mac Dre did it because Mac Dre did it in a real way. He put everybody on. To where everybody was eating, everybody had some limelight, they had a spotlight on them. You know, he did all of that shit, bro. You feel me? He put everybody in a position to win and to where, you know, it gave niggas opportunity, bro. Now, this is what I'm trying to get at. I say that to say this. I look at the way Mac Dre did things, and then I think about it. I'm like, why do we have these other hip hop moguls and we have these other balling ass rap niggas that's on? And they're not spreading the game like Mac Dre did. They're not obligated to. You feel what I'm saying? They're not obligated, right. but they are in a position of power to where they could do that, and it could benefit them. It could benefit them, and it could benefit the Bay Area to for for like for us to get shine like how these other states and cities do. You feel what I'm saying? Straight right up, because. I mean, Mac Dre was successful at what the fuck he did, bro. You feel me? Regardless if niggas got famous or not after that, he put niggas in a position, whether they lost or they kept going. You feel me? Like, that was on them. But Mac Dre did his part by spreading the game and putting niggas on. You feel me? So you, your, your biggest thing is the information. It's, 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 it's sharing, making sure the information and, and, and guiding motherfuckers, putting niggas in the position where motherfuckers can have a fair shot to, to, to do this. Niggas are hoarding the game. So let's just say this, right? What's a player? What's a pimp? What's a street nigga? What's an OG that's got all these life experiences and game and all this knowledge that you wouldn't be able to learn in school and all of these type of things? What's an OG if you ask him a question and he doesn't provide you with the valuable game that could lead you in the right direction instead of, you know, he sees you on a path to fuckery and just don't say nothing. Like, what good am I if I got all this game and I don't share it, if I don't spread it? You feel what I'm saying? Like, I'm not finna, like, let's just say this. I'm not, like, like niggas, like, niggas know I be kicking around game, like, soccer around this motherfucker, but it's like, I'm not finna roll up to niggas' different neighborhoods with a motherfucking speakerphone and be like, I got game for sale, or hey niggas, free game. I'm not finna fucking do that. You feel what I'm saying? But niggas know I keep it player, so it's like, and I'm at that age where nigga consider me a young OG. Like nigga, I am available to give niggas game if if you need it. You feel what I'm saying? But you touchable, yeah. People can reach you. You touchable, yeah. A lot of these other niggas don't, bro. They're they're they, they egos and you know like. These niggas is in over their head. They think that they somebody to the point where it's just like not even game no more. It's like everybody want to be fucking tough. Everybody want to be fucking steppers and kill people and 
all that weird ass evil shit. Like niggas ain't even thinking about the bigger picture for the future of the youth. You feel what I'm saying? Like, like think about it. Like, bro, like how many niggas like like I could say, like I can ask you, but I could say that I know there's more niggas out there in the streets in Fairfield right now with more guns than gang. That's a fact. Facts. That's a fact, nigga. That's a fact. Straight up. If like Grande, we, we 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 could we could we could say every hood in Fairfield, Grande, Metal Art, nigga, East Tabor, nigga, motherfucking Bristol, nigga, the West Side where I'm from. The West. And, and I'm not trying to say that niggas is bootsy. I'm not saying any of that. I'm not calling niggas no nothing. I'm not throwing shade on niggas no nothing. But I'm just saying, when I'm speaking on this, I'm speaking on it because there's OG niggas out there with game and they're not providing it. You know, and it brings me to say, that's why I guarantee there's a fact there's more niggas that got guns than game. That's what I'm saying. You feel me? Like, uh, I don't want nobody to get it fucking confused and try to say, oh, this nigga talking about my hood. Nigga, it's not about that. Uh, yeah, nah. Nigga, it's about these that's older... Power, that's deep what you're saying. Like, there's niggas that got more firearms than actual information. Niggas is doing right. this, but ain't. But you don't have this. You you don't got the information. You And that, and that's deep because that's really how it is. Like, not, in, not even just in our city. Like, the Bay Area alone, like, it's more motherfuckers on the street that it's on that or had that, but don't don't have the information because they had the information. Like you said, if somebody was to guide them or whatever, they probably wouldn't even have picked up a gun in the first place. Hey, you know what a nigga, you know what one of my folks told me a long time ago when we was kicking around game? This is what this nigga said. You know what's crazy is that a lot of these niggas that's with this shit in the streets, these niggas is pulling capers. And, and doing all this foul play crimes and the coldest part about it is that they do all of these things. They got these bad habits, right? They do drugs. They can't stop smoking weed. They got to drink. They got to go out to the club. They got to buy the freshest clothes. Fucked up habits and priorities, right? And they and they pull all of these crimes, these, these bunk-ass petty crimes. And what's crazy is that when it comes to it, they're really making minimum wage money but taking a risk of they're taking penitentiary chances over motherfucking amounts of minimum wage money nigga minimum wage money like i don't give a fuck what a nigga say i know niggas out there right now that are that are pulling licks and and robbing people sticking up people doing janky ass slime ball shit and the shit that they're doing don't amount to nothing because they don't know how to manage money. It's like, at least at least if you're going to be doing slime ball shit, and I'm not promoting it like you should do it, at least if you're going to be doing it, do it for a purpose. Don't be out there doing it to live this bunk-ass lifestyle. You're getting high, sipping syrup, popping pills. You, you're trying to fuck on bitches, snort coke. You're doing square shit. You're buying fly clothes. Like, niggas don't even got their mind right. Like, do it to save up some money to get into a house. Get in the condo. Invest and get you a car so you can start, you know, so you can get you a job somewhere. Do, do something like save this money. Like go buy your kids some shit. Nigga, do something real with the money. Don't stop fucking around. You feel what I'm saying? Like niggas, it's like niggas are so focused on the image nowadays and it's got everything to do with the internet. Niggas are so focused on the image nowadays that they will risk their life going to prison for it. Mm. That was deep. Damn, that one just fucked me up. Cause that's some real shit. That's real talk, bro. Before I've been to prison, I already knew this. Before I've been like, internet, I was locked down. I was locked down with a with, with a with a North Crip from Stockton, a young nigga. He was nineteen. I was twenty one at the time. His nigga was a broke nigga, man. Straight broke nigga. Never had nothing to his name. Never had an apartment. Have no kids. He ain't even have a bitch when he went down. He ain't had nothing. No money on his books, no nothing. Gangsta ass nigga. 
Yo, three people got three different life terms. Because he was trying to rob a nigga for a pound. Ended up shooting three people in the process. And he got to live with that for the rest of his life in high desert. He ain't never coming back. A pound. A pound? A pound. Pound we. When all you had to do like that's a month that's that like that's a month of a minimum wage work. Your life is gone. Your life is gone because you wanted to go pull a lick on some niggas for a pound and you could have made that money taking zero risk working at a fucking McDonald's. Yep. Forty hours at McDonald's would have got you that got an ego. You got something to prove. You want to be like everybody and get the step in. You want to be, you know, yeah, this shit is stupid, man. But that's that, that's the reality of it, bro. That's the reality of it, man. That and, and those are the fucking results of these OG niggas having game and not providing. Ooh. Real nigga is going to let you like, hey, bro, you fucking up. You slipping, man. Let me catch you where you at. Let me let you know. Whoever you hanging around ain't guiding you in the right direction, man. Look at what you did. Now, what if you would have got caught strong arming this nigga for that little three thousand dollars? You know how you know how long you go down for a strong arm robbery, my nigga. You looking, man? They gonna man? They gonna dinner give you like ten years for a strong arm robbery? Real talk. Rest in peace to that little crest nigga. But look at what happened to him when it didn't work. That, that, that kid Lil Thieves, that's fucked up, right? His life got snatched from him because them niggas were trying to hit a lick. He was a re retired police chief, bro. A retired police chief that was in the marijuana business, bro. You know what I'm saying? And... Like, and as far as I know, the kid had a rap career, nigga. He had oh, wow. him. He fucked with the SOB niggas. So he had a stepping stone for success. You, you, you got a decent following. Niggas is fucking with you. Like, let's keep it real. Bitches is paying niggas selling a pussy just because they rappers nowadays. All of these opportunities you had to do other illegal things that wouldn't put you at much risk. You want to go and rob a nigga? Now your life took. Now your parents got to deal with the stress of you being gone now because you want to go do that's fucked up. You all you had to go do was break a bitch. All you had to do was go grind tough in the studio for a month and make more music. You still would have been alive. You, you would have been like it's, it's, that. Shit is crazy, man. See. Somebody was absent in his life to tell him right from wrong. Mm. We on boss talk, y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He didn't come up here to give it to y'all lightweight. He came up here to give it to y'all raw, man. You know what I'm saying? It's real shit. We talking some real shit right now, man. Like my sister said right there, niggas pride and ego be displaced, man. Displaced. When you broke but got high standards. What the fuck is that? I feel you on that. Right. Right, right. Niggas' priorities be fucked up, man. Niggas be so how weird. do you so, so so what's your place? How do you feel about the the music business in general? Like, are you are you more of a person that wanna eventually uh take a deal if you want to go that route, or you want to stay more on the independent route, or like what's what's your space on the music industry and like where you see yourself in it? I mean, as long as it's not no three sixty deal, you know what I mean? Like, like I, it, some some break down with a three sixty deal for the fans, man, so they can understand what a three sixty deal is. For real, I don't, I, 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 I really don't even know like the actual complete specifics, the deep down specifics of a three sixty deal. But what I do know from from other people's experiences that have done it, like, bro, it's it's just a black hole, bro. It's a black hole if you're stupid. And honestly, 
I mean, I feel like it's just a black hole all the way, all the way around the board, bro. And honestly, the niggas that get fucked in it is that the niggas that ain't used to money, bro, because they they get their they get their advance and they just go blowing on hell jewelry, cars, and all hell of fly shit, not realizing that this is an advance. This is something you have to pay back. You don't just you don't just get that shit, and then it's just your money, bro. Like everything has to be paid back, bro. Like honestly, it it's better going independent. It's better going independent for real. Like, straight up, it's the best way to do it, bro. That way you can get all of your money, bro. You don't got to have you don't gotta have nobody basically pimping you out. You feel what I'm saying? Like, nigga, that's basically like... Yeah. I mean, honestly, look, let's be real like this. If you get offered a 360 deal, you must be hot to the point where you got the attention of the Illuminati because that, that's the only niggas that get those type of deals. Let's be, like, the little pumps and the little Zans and the the little <laughs> nigga <laughs> and the and the, the, the the trippy reds and the you know shit like that, bro. Like those type of niggas, like those type of niggas, like them niggas all worship the devil, man. The the Travis Scotts, like, and they're marketable with every other race except for black people. A very small percentage of black people. Let's be real. When you if you were to if you were to pull up a video right now and look at a Travis Scott concert, you're gonna see nothing but white people. You look up a Trippy Red concert video, you're gonna see nothing but white people. You gotta be marketable to them in a manner to where you're gonna make millions of dollars and attract millions of people to even get a 360 deal offer by a major label. Not everybody gets those fucking type of deals. You feel me? Like, a lot of niggas is making that shit independently. Like, that nigga, uh, for example, that nigga, uh, independently right now, that, that one nigga, Young Blue, he's independent. Everybody thought he had a deal. He, he's fucking with, he's got a, he's got a solid deal with Boosie's label, with, with Boosie's label. Like, that's some type of shit I would fuck with. I would fuck with Boosie. I will fuck with that nigga, uh, what's that big head ass nigga name, blood? Yo Gotti. I'll fuck with Yo Gotti too. You yeah, know? I'll, I'll fuck with Yo Gotti. Yeah, Yo Gotti's dope. Like, like, those are niggas that are giving people real good deals. And he's really helping them eat. You feel what I'm saying? Like, he's not fucking them over like these major levels. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, I mean, anytime I've ever heard about a nigga getting a 360 deal, bro, it's just been bad, bro. Like, take. Hell yeah. One hundred percent, three sixty deal. They take, they take a percentage of everything, yo. They taking a percentage of your merchandise, your publishing, your music, your tour money, and then sometimes in the deal, like if let's say like you sign to the label, but then you get like a, a, a actor role or something, they get a percentage of that too. They pretty much get a percentage off of anything that you do. So it's like, nigga, that's right, nigga. What the fuck? It's crazy. Gotta but they got they trying to make sure they can recoup the 360 deal was put in place so they can make sure that they recoup their money because the industry started changing. So then yeah. they started making the 360 deals and shit to make sure that they can recoup because the money on in the industry was looking different than how it was. Because you know, like in the 90s, them niggas was getting 20, 30, 50 million dollar deals, and you know what I mean. And then over time, has like the in the, as the industry it should change. It's like if you walk in the office, you probably you probably get a, a quarter million, if that. We in, <laughs> we in the motherfucking era of the clout, bro. A lot the of the clout, niggas, yeah. We are in the era of the clout. A lot of these niggas are all signing deals, bro. All signing deals. I'm gonna keep it real with you, like, <laughs> like um, let's just say like, filthy rich. Lavish D, motherfucking like like niggas that really come from the street that got big money, they not gonna sign no deals. We know that, and not only that, um, major labels don't even try to highlight them. You know why? Because the major labels know that they can't control them. That's why I say we're in the era of the clout. Anybody who's chasing clout and they got talent in the in in those rich elite bastards that run all these record labels see that. They, they, they got a vulnerable artist that they can control. You feel me? And somebody that's marketable that, that, that they can sell and pimp out. 
for their benefit. You feel me? Those are the type of niggas that get dragged into that shit. They're not gonna like, like, let's just say, like, nigga, let's just say, for example, bro, like, Lavish D, bro. Like, that nigga can rap like a motherfucker. He's raw. He's got the style. He's marketable. All the shit. But those labels ain't gonna fuck with him because they know that they can't control him. They know that he already got his own money. They can't do nothing with him. They don't want niggas like him. They won't even try to give him the time of day. Unless he were to come at them and be like, hey, I want you to control me. And then they can make him a superstar. You, you can become a superstar, bro. You feel me? Like, if they if they see that you're marketable, bro, and you somebody that, you feel me, can be sold, bro, you can become a superstar, but that shit gonna come with a price, nigga. You said they come with a price. No, that's, no, that's true. 100%. Everything come with a price. So that's just in general. Now, on the flip side, though, in my experience, I have seen, I seen it on both ways because I think people get independence, meaning of like, you just do everything by yourself. Like, I think that be part of the misguidance too. Like, be, you can be independent, but you still need a team. So, like, you still yeah. want your in-house team, a, 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 a engineer, a, a, a in-house producer that can help develop your sound. Somebody that's that may be good at gotten the ear for music as an A and R. You still want your, you still want a team. Cause the motherfuckers run around here, they scream that independent shit. I'm independent. I'm independent. I just do everything. My, I mix, mix, do graphics. Yeah, that's inaccurate. I, I do everything. It's like nigga, you're not gonna win like that. That's not how anybody wins, my nigga. You need a team. I don't mean you gotta go sign to a big label, but you want an in-house team to help circle around you to help be able to help you get an incline in what you're doing. But I, I see a lot of that going on with the independence. Like I'm I'm independent. I'm independent. I do everything. I make beats. I do graphics. <laughs> I do everything. Yeah, that's that's very inaccurate, yeah, bro. bro. I'm gonna keep it real like like nigga shit. A nigga could be in when you say independent, well when I think independent when somebody says that, I'm thinking you're not signed to a label. Right. Because other than that, like it takes a very large group effort for everything that you need to do. The producer that you may be fucking with, all of the producers you may be fucking with, everybody everybody is a stepping stone for a nigga to blow up and, and get on to get exposure. Like, nigga, the person you make videos with, the person that produces your music, the person that, the, the you know, if you go to somebody else, it might be the person who motherfucking makes a master in your shit, the nigga that's helping you make graphic designs, uh, you know, all of that shit, bro. Like, and then, you know, if you got a person managing you to help you promote your shit too, like there's so many different people that play different parts in this shit. So it's not independent completely, but in the, the, the it's freedom, independent. yeah, it's, it's independent because you're not backed up by a major label. A major label, yep. Nah, that's a fact, bro. So musically, man, what you got coming up, man? What what you got cooking up? To be no, real no. with you, bro, I've been shit. I haven't, I haven't dropped any new music in like a month, but that's because I got hella grown life going on, like hella different shit going on, like trying yeah. to take care of different things, fucking responsibilities and priorities, you know. Like I do, I do a lot of different things. So like shit, I've been, I've been sleeping, but I got, I got, bro, right now I got like fifteen, I got fifteen, sixteen songs just sitting there, bro. Probably even, and I got about like seven projects that all have a verse and a hook on them. Like, I got hella shit, and I got two music videos that I just filmed about, like, three weeks ago that I still haven't even edited. So, I, I mean, I, I got I got shit. I just need to get other things out of the way so I could start putting more focus into that. Not only that, bro, I'm, I'm, trying, to, uh, I'm trying to put more money into different places, too, so I could be able to spend more money investing into promoting myself, too. You feel me? Because, like, like, I got a small following on Instagram. Like, I got about, like, 2,000 followers. But I'm going to keep it real with you. Instagram hella weird, bro. Like, not Instagram. Like, I ain't going to lie. A lot of my followers are fucking weird. Like, like I got a lot of motherfuckers that just be following me. And I feel like motherfuckers just be watching me, bro. Like, and mind you, like, I don't, like I said, I don't got problems with nobody anywhere. Not in my city, not any other city. But, like, I feel like a lot of my followers, niggas just be watching my page, bro. Like, and that's weird, like. Like, you ain't obligated to react to everything I post, but it's like, like, if like if you were to go to my, 
my page right now and exclude everything about my drift car shit, right? Don't, like, if you look at my regular pictures, like, if I post pictures, if I post videos, shit like that, right? And then you look at my followers, it don't add up. And it's not because I don't make shit with substance. You feel what I'm saying? Like, nigga, like, I know how to rap good. Like, you feel me? Like, I, I, I have quality to put up there, you feel me, for motherfuckers to be entertained by the shit that I do. I just feel like a lot of motherfuckers just be watching my page, bro, and that shit's weird. Like, I feel like, you know, when I think of it, it's like, motherfuckers be, like, I, I like, I like hella nigga shit. Like, even if, even if I feel like, you know, like, you ain't really that dope at rapping or anything like that, you know, I'm not gonna sit there and be like, oh, this nigga's trash. That's, that's not how I think of things, bro. Like, if you rapping and you doing your thing, bro, like, I'm going to support it, you feel me, and, and give a positive push, give my positivity, whether it's a like or a comment, anything, bro, because I'm just player like that. Like, I'm not just going to be following somebody and just watch their page. That's weird, bro. Like, why the fuck would I follow you and just watch your page, be watching your stories? Don't like nothing you post. You know, you, just, I, you know the way I look at it? I, you know, and, and, and this is really reality. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. When I think of my followers that don't like my shit, don't support, like, I don't cry over support. But when I think of these motherfuckers that don't support me, that don't like my shit, that don't comment on shit, and they just be watching me, bro, it's like a nigga that's inside of their house watching you through the blinds like this, nigga. You a peeping Tom ass nigga. You just watching me, huh? Hey, your shit muted, people, bro. I mean, a lot of people do do that. They follow people and just oh, that's... do their stories and shit and don't support nothing. <laughs> Motherfucker, bro, like, bro, like, nigga, you, bro, you in a, you like this. Like, oh, this nigga just bought another car. Oh, this nigga just bought another chain. Oh, this... <laughs> you hear this? Niggas weird, bro. Like weird. Niggas be weird as fuck, bro. Like, be but, weird. <laughs> like this ain't expected at nobody, man. Like I'm talking about. This goes for anybody that follows me, and for the people that I follow. Because the people that I follow, I'm always liking niggas shit. I'm commenting here and there. I'm not just watching their page. That shit is fucking weird, bro. I don't got no. That's that's what bitches do. Bitches make fake ass pages to watch you. Bitches use their page to just watch you. I'm not trying to fucking watch you. I can watch. I watch my daughter, nigga, and I watch TV. The so fuck, man? That shit is weird. Unfollow. <laughs> unfollow me. Like, stop looking at my fucking page, bro. Like, you know my music is dope, nigga. Fuck with it, nigga, bro. You feel me? Fuck with it, man. I I, I think it's kind of intimidating to people how player I am, bro. I'm gonna keep it real. Mm. Not everybody's so welcoming, bro. Everybody's so tough nowadays. I think it rubs people the wrong way that I'm just so player and so cool. Like, that's my personality in real life. Like, how I talk on the internet, these videos that I make promoting my music to tell niggas to go fuck with my shit, that's really how I am. You feel me? Like, I'm not no high-power-ass, gangster-acting-ass nigga, man. I'm player than a motherfucker, man. You feel what I'm saying? Straight up like that, nigga. I'm cool like the other side of the pillow all the time. You feel what I'm saying? Straight up. I think some people don't like that for some reason and that's weird yeah you know man people are attracted to negative bullshit the, the shit that they shouldn't be attracted to is always the opposite is when, when motherfuckers are smooth and cool respectful and show love them the motherfuckers that they are intimidated by ignorant and intimidated by not educated I will. motherfuckers are intimidated to things that they are not educated on and what's what's unknown to them. That's a fact, brother. So I got I got two more questions for you, brother. Um the first question is what would you tell a a, a, a up and coming artist that's coming up, a young boy coming up right now that's inspired to do music or any type of form of entertainment? What would be some advice you would personally give them? 
Yeah. Don't worry about being the best lyricist. That would be the first thing. Because from my experience, shit, there's been niggas that then got on and got rich off of, like, let's just say, Michael Flocker. Michael Flocker was never a lyricist. You feel me? Like, there's a lot of niggas that rap off beat. A lot of niggas that don't care about using certain type of wordplay. Just focus on your craft, bro. Focus on your craft and take it serious. You feel me? Focus on your craft and take it serious, bro. And, like, as much as possible, as much as possible, always try to give y'all 100 to this music shit. You feel me? Because, like, nigga, the rap game is like the dope game. The rap game is like the dope game, bro. You feel me? If you don't, if if you, if you out here tiptoeing, if you out here tiptoeing instead of stomping for what you believe in, like stomping like a sumo, you feel me? Like, like if you ain't doing that, bro, like, you're not going to get anywhere with this shit, bro. Like, it's hard. Like, and every year, bro, like, and I swear to God, within the past few years, bro, there's been so many more rappers just popping out the woodwork. So it's like you really, you really got to show your ass with this shit if you if you want to get on with this music, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Like, to a new artist, bro, like, for real, like, nigga. Just like these memes that I've been seeing on Instagram, but, I mean, it's reality. Nigga, it's best that you go broke investing into what you believe in, your craft and your music, versus you going broke having fucked up habits, doing other stupid shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to really grind for this shit, bro. You got to network. Don't have a dickhead ego. Don't act like you're better than nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep it player. You know, don't involve, if you're in the streets, don't involve your street politics with this shit. Show love to people. You know what I'm saying? Give positive vibes out, you know, nigga. Dude. I mean, that's that's just some things for starters right there that I would tell a young artist. You feel me? A, a, a new nigga to the game. Straight up. Straight up, man. Nah, that's real shit, bro. And where can people support you at, man? If, if, if they want to hear your music or any type of they can support you, where can they support you at and tap in on what your movement and what you got going on, man? Oh shit, hey, 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 if you want to reach a nigga, man, shit, search a nigga BH Smooth, man, you feel me, on YouTube, shit, nigga can fuck with me on here on Instagram too as well, you feel me, I mean, it, it ain't, it ain't hard to find me, you can search the Mac Mob, you feel me, you gonna find a nigga shit everywhere, along with music that I got with my brother and everything, you feel me, so, yeah, that's, that's the way to reach a nigga, man, you know, get you some motherfucking game, you did. And there y'all have it, man. And I appreciate you for coming on, brother, man, and, and sharing your insight and giving your thoughts and opinions, man. You know you got my support. You know, anything you, anything you need from me, you know it's love, bro. Likewise, bro. It needs to be more of that, for sure, for sure. Besides this interview, you know. I'm with that. 100%. 100%, bro. Um, Any last words? Anything you want to promote or anything you got coming up? Anything you want to put out there for the, you know, for the, for the people? Man, shit, I got more coming. I got more shit coming, man. You dig what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, man. You know, niggas is going to have to lock in with a nigga, man. But I definitely got some more dope shit coming for the show, for the show. New, it's new stuff on the way. Okay, okay. Hell yeah, man. Well, there y'all have it, man. My boy, man. You know what I'm saying? Dope fucking interview, bro. I, I appreciate you for coming on, man. For real, for real, man. Dope. Dope interview, man. Hell of an interview, bro. Thank you. You have a good one, brother. Man, you too, man. Stay good, man. Bless up, bro. Sir, you have a blessed one, man. You too. All right. Dope, dope, dope. Shout out to bro, man. B.A. Smooth, man. Dope motherfucking interview. You know what I'm saying? Boss talk every Fridays. Dance canoe every Tuesdays. 1 p.m., man. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank you.